Hi everyone, this is John with Sim Racing Revolution. Today is going to be something really different. Um, I got my hands on a 3D printer. I've been having a ton of fun with it and it's been taking up like all my time. So I haven't really been making videos. So I figured why not make a quick video on 3D printing, what I'm using it for, and uh, yeah, just some ideas for 3D printing. <laughs> all right, we'll be right back. Okay, hello everybody. So what I bought was I bought an FL Sun or a Full Sun or FL Sun, I'm not sure exactly how you say it, but it's a Super Racer um, Delta printer, which means it stands up, it has different axis and it just basically goes along like this <laughs> on a flat bed that doesn't move and it goes ahead and does the printing. Um, so it's really cool. It's very fast. Um, it does a lot of cool stuff. So what I did is I went out to thingiverse.com, which is a website where people can upload their own uh, 3D print stuff, their .stl files. So you can design something in Blender or CAD or some CAD program of your choice, AutoCAD, whatever you have. And then you can save it as an STL. You can load it onto Thingiverse. Other people can download those files, slice them in Slicer software. It gets really complicated. I won't bore you with all that. But the end result is you can print other people's designs, design your own stuff and print it on your own 3D printer without having to buy it from anybody else. And there's a lot of people that are posting some cool stuff. So I wanted to give a shout out to two people. Um, and I'll, I'll shout them out actually as we go through. But the first thing I wanted to show you guys is a mount for your steering wheels. Uh, so for your Fanatic steering wheels with the quick release, um, being able to mount them on your rig um, is kind of a cool idea. You can even mount them to the wall too if you, if you so choose. But mounting them to the rig with the 8040 profile that my rig's built out of just works perfectly because I don't have to have my wheels laying all over the place and then I have to, you know, find them and all that. I can just put them right on there. Now I only have like three wheels that I ever go between. So um, I can mount them all right on my rig. And here's what it looks like. Here's the finished product of what it looks like. So I'll try to get that up close. And then in here, so you can see that ridge that's in the middle and you can see the bolt holes right there and it's a really great design um and I'll, I'll show you how it goes i do have a piece of 8040 profile here that my rig is made out of so how this works is it goes this way vertically and just mounts on like that so once you have it mounted and i'll set this down for a second then you can take your wheel of choice so I have my Fanatic F1 wheel and I'll just set it kind of in there like that. And you can see how it just fits right in with the quick release holds it in place. And it just works perfectly fine. It's very sturdy. Um, I am using a PLA plus and I want to show you guys, uh, so PLA plus at a 40% infill and I have a five layers on all the walls. So it's super strong. It really is strong. It's probably way overkill for, for what I'm using it for, but, um, and it used a lot of filament to print it, but it's very cool. So here's my first attempt. So this was with the white filament that actually came with my printer and so i was trying to be like an engineer at heart and say well geez they want me to print it standing up like that or the finished product standing up like that and print it that way i was like why don't i flip it that way and print it that just seems like a better idea i don't know why that sounded like a better idea to me because if you're printing it this way, and this is what happened to this, you can see this was with a 20% infill. You can see the honeycomb kind of inside there. Uh, so just imagine a 40% infill is really dense. Um, but anyway, when it went to print, the other side of this ridge was to hang over, and it's basically impossible to print that. <laughs> it just started drooping all over the place and getting tangled up. and it became like a spider web. So I stopped the print, tore it all apart, went back to the way it's supposed to print, 
which was sitting like this and it just prints every row and goes up and this is my finished product. So this thing works great. I'm gonna make a few more of these. Um, I didn't have to modify anything on this print. It just worked perfectly. So really nice job. And who designed this? Well, it was a remix of a design that was done before because somebody had made this originally to only mount this way on a piece of profile. Um, the bolt holes were not the right width to be able to mount through these channels this way. So this individual remixed this design and put it so you can mount it that way, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to go this way. So with this design though, with the bolt holes the right distance, you can do it either way you want. It doesn't really make a difference now. So great job. And that was by Hawk, Hawker 80 Mech on Thingiverse. So if you do find it, it's called the Fanatic QR8040 Simrig Vertical Mount. So you can go ahead and give that a shot and try it out for yourself. And something else that's really cool about this design is the way the bolt holes are inset in there. So when you put, and this is what I was using right here, and when you set that in, it sets all the way in. I don't know if that comes out on camera, but it does sit all the way in there so it won't affect your wheel rim quick release hitting that at all. So it works out perfect. And uh, yeah, just a great job. You just put your T-locks in, in the channel on your profile and it screws right in. It's, it's awesome. And I was going to buy these mount things for like a set of two or three of them or something. It was like 20 bucks. Um, so I figured, hey, why not make my own? Since I have a 3D printer, I'll make all my own stuff. All right, so the next thing, and this one was a little more difficult. So this here is a bracket that you use to mount your power supply. So for my DD... Fanatic Podium DD wheelbase. So DD1, DD2 comes with these huge, monstrous um, power supply units. And so what I did was I found this one on Thingiverse and it had a design like this. Um, and then the other side was just open, which I, I don't understand why they did it that way. Um, and then the original design had, had just one uh, kind of went like this with one hole so you could just or it went this way I'm sorry with one hole and you could just mount it to your rig with just you know if you wanted to put it on a profile like this it would mount there and you know that would be it um, so somebody else remixed that one and put these on there like that now this is the first one that I printed and I trusted the person that printed it it would be, it would, it would fit <laughs> the 8040 profile when in fact a point it does not. So when I went to fit it on there, it was so tight. That's about as far as I can get it onto the profile. Um, but the idea is, is that it sandwiches onto the profile. Uh, you put your T-locks in and you bolt it down to either side. And then it, it kind of just goes like that and you put your power supply in one end and then the other end though see this is where i modified it i didn't really modify it a lot but i just printed two of these and one on each side and sandwiched the power supply in there because i always unplug mine um because i my rig is on casters so i can move it out of the way and do other things because i have a very small space so i can strap it on there i can unplug the power supply from the part that goes into the wall and I just unplug that right from the power supply and just wheel my rig out of the way when I'm not using it. So uh, so to have it mounted and ready to go and you know not being able to move because this holds it in place is very cool. But what I had to do to fix this is I had to, you can actually take these STL files and if you find something that you like, but it doesn't quite fit your implementation, you can download free software and uh, it's called Blender and Blender is pretty popular. It's an open source software you can use for animation, for models, uh, gaming, all sorts of stuff. Blender is a very powerful tool. And what I did is loaded the STL file into Blender. You can actually go in and modify 
all of this once it's in there. Um, it's a very complicated, well, it's not too complicated, but it's more than it probably needs to be. But uh, basically what I did is I took one of these whole pieces here and just moved it out a little bit so it got to 80 millimeters exactly. And you can do measurement tools and blender and everything to make sure it's exact. Uh, and yeah, so I did that and I, I did it to the ones that are actually working and I actually have my power supply locked in there right now. I didn't want to take it back apart again because it was a real pain uh, trying to get underneath the rig to get these in because what it does is it sits basically the rail that is framing out this whole rig is what these are clamped onto and this gets really close to the floor on this side so I didn't want to unscrew it and, and show you guys the actual thing but you get the idea and this is what you get. Now this one was remixed by and it's called the Fanatic DD PSU mount and it's by JK uh, Lyman I guess um, but I do have an issue that I don't think he tested this on a piece of profile or his profile is just slightly different than mine. Uh, but it should be 80 millimeters wide and this was like 76.8 something or something around those lines. So not quite up to spec. So, um, or 79 points or so, I forget. It was, it was off just enough where it doesn't fit as you could see. So I did modify it, I fixed it. I'll probably send that back up to Thingiverse and uh, yeah, and just do it that way so somebody else doesn't run into the same issues that I did and has to redesign it again. But very cool stuff. So I just wanted to kind of throw it out there that there's a whole plethora of things out there that you can do um, if you have a 3D printer. And if you have a little bit of know-how, like we're in the sim racing realm here, so nothing we do here on the PC side seems to always be easy. Uh, we're always tweaking stuff, we're always doing things, so it shouldn't be too difficult. So if you have a 3D printer, you can do that, um, and it, it's really cool. And the reason that I wanted to do that myself is by buying the things that I did, and you guys have seen the unboxings and the assemblies and all that stuff from Dax Print Shop where I bought my... Um, you know, the, the mounts and for my phone and I got the mount for my um, uh, uh, XL button box <laughs> thing, <laughs> whatever it's called, I forget, but it's right there staring at me. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I wanted to do it on my own. So I figured, uh, hey, I had some extra money from stuff I sold and I bought a 3D printer with it and I figured, hey, why not learn? So um, so I just wanted to kind of show you guys that there's lots of stuff out there that you can do to modify your rig. The next thing I'm gonna do is there's clips that I'm gonna, I'm going to, and that's on Thingiverse as well. They have clips that actually clip into the 8040 profile channels and you can use it for cable management. So that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, that's next what I'm gonna make and put on my rig to just kind of organize everything a little bit better. So um, yeah, so really not much a point to this video other than I uh, wanted to show you guys what I was working on and uh, yeah, what's been taking up so much of my time. So anyway, guys, uh, we'll be right back to wrap all this up. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, before I forget, please subscribe and like and all that good stuff. Hit the bell icon so you know when future videos are coming out. And also remember, every Friday, I'm going to post the new iRacing Week race. So that's going to come up. This is Thursday right now. So tomorrow's Friday. I'm going to be doing that. We're racing at Spa this week with the Advanced MX5 Cup Series. And I am so looking forward to racing on Spa, although I'm still a little nervous about it too. But <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I'm always going to be probably with race days. Um, also, on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, the Sim Racing System, Sim Racing Revolution series is ongoing. So we had our first race this past Tuesday night. I'm live streaming every race that we do, and it's every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. There were only three people, including myself, that showed up to the last race. So please, if you do have time, come on out and help support the channel, help support Sim Racing System because it's a great service. It's free. You can just sign up and race with us and uh, have a great time doing it. It's not a whole huge investment in your time either. It's 10 minutes to qualify, 20 minutes to race. So it's a 30 minute event 
and uh, it's just a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so please come out and support it. And uh, it'd be great to have you guys racing. Um, if you're a member of the channel, if you're subscribing, then come on out and, and race. So that's all I got to say. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, the 3D printing is awesome. I love it. This thing's probably like almost worth the price of admission on its own. It's so cool. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Keep sim racing. This is John the Sim Racing Revolution, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.